Um, I'm the founder and um, uh, CEO of Heartbeam. I'd like to talk today about chest pain and heart attack. Individuals who are facing a uh, episode of chest pain are uh, really faced with a big dilemma. How to react to that chest pain? Is it indigestion or is it a heart, uh, heart attack, MI, life-threatening situation? It would be of great value if uh, uh, at that moment when they experienced those symptoms, they could have a cardiologist next to them with a 12 lead ECG machine anywhere they are. That would be an ideal situation that could instantly happen. Of course, uh, that is not realistic, but what we have done is built a technology that actually provides that same value of a cardiologist next to the patient with a 12 lead ECG trying to help diagnose that patient who is experiencing chest pain. So let's talk a little bit more about the problem. And the problem uh, has you know, two angles to it. And one is um, well-known fact, publications have shown, peer-reviewed publications have shown that an individual on an average waits about three hours in a chest pain situation before they react. Three hours later, the mortality rate goes up by 50%. Time is muscle in a, in a ischemic type of situation. So, big problem. The other side of that same problem is that many people are aware uh, of the fact that uh, heart attack is number one killer within the, 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 the heart disease, which is number one cause of death in the, in the world. And uh, they run to the emergency room for no good reason. It is indigestion after all, and about 90% of these visits are unnecessary. Price tag for that is over $10 billion for these unnecessary visits to emergency room in a chest pain situation. So what is out there that can really help uh, a patient experiencing chest pain trying to basically get a triage, trying to decide, help them decide what to do in that in that uh, particular situation. Um, so on the right-hand side, you see uh, Apple Watch and a Live Core. These are single lead ECG solutions that offer an advice or uh, uh, have value for AFib patients, arrhythmia patients. I'm not sure what happened here. Okay, sorry. Um, so, it, of course, there is a standard well lead ECG that is, you know, f for professional use in the, in, the, in the hospital medical institutions. So there is nothing out there that would be with the patient at all times that would provide the value of a cardiologist and that well lead ECG machine 24-7 with that patient. Um, sorry. Um, so how does our system accomplish this? There is, of course, an app. User declares how they feel. Is this a regularly scheduled checkup, a green, or is it a situation where they feel discomfort and pain? Um, after that, um, once they in initiate a session, there is a small credit card size device that uh, is indeed uh, or very easy to carry fits into a uh, wallet, and uh, you press that against your chest uh, for about 30 seconds, and all that goes up to the cloud through your phone, where your symptoms reside and your history resides. Uh, eye cardiology is the expert system that decides what's appropriate action uh, suggested to, to the patient, goes directly to the patient. So all this is under one minute in terms of uh, from, the, from the time when you activated the, 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 the app to the advice given to the patient. At the same time, if a physician is involved in this, they get uh, all the medical data, including the waveforms and the symptoms and all that um, uh, relevant information that they need if they are to be part of this uh, decision-making process, but that's not mandatory. So we, we have done four studies, actually I've shown only three that are related to MI here. Uh, and uh, they were all designed by Beth Israel uh, Hospital faculty at Harvard. 
And the first one was uh, basically how good is our ECG marker, which is different than the traditional ST change, because we work in the 3D space of vector cardiography. How good is that compared to a standard of care, three well-known, world-class cardiologists reading ECGs? And this was a PCI study when we inflated balloons in people's hearts, and they basically mixed negatives and positives and asked which one is ischemic versus not. And we beat the Harvard cardiologists by about 20% uh, percent, as you can see here, due to our 3D treatment of the, of the vectorial signals. The second study is uh, actually a um, study of chest pain patient in the, in the emergency department. And indeed, we have shown that compared to three cardiologists, we were indifferent, slightly better in our sensitivity and specificity was very similar to them as well. And so it, it basically lends a credibility to our, uh, this study lends credibility to our claim that indeed we are as good as a cardiologist next to you 24 seven. And the last study was about false positive rate for routine non-symptomatic patients. We have not seen one. So o overall, uh, benefits to the stakeholders are very clear. Uh, patients benefit, saves lives, reduce fear, anxiety. Uh, the payors will see uh, uh, tremendous savings in unnecessary visits to emergency room, and uh, providers will have a tool for long-term monitoring post-intervention. And last but not least, we will be building a big data of these ECG, three-dimensional ECG signals, X, Y, Z of a heart vector that provide a wealth of information that we have shown to be more rich, actually, than the 12 lead uh, in our first study. And looking at the, the business case here, first, we need to get FDA approval, and we are raising funds for that. But after all these studies we have done, we feel very confident that that should be a process that is not very risky. And then looking at the whole picture here, there are about 8 million people in the US who have survived a heart attack or were intervened on for a um, coronary artery disease. So those are the very high risk patients and we uh, plan to go to market uh, uh, basically addressing their needs and their cardiologist's needs. Thank you. Thank you. For two questions, judges, questions, we can go to the audience. Yeah. Um, so just quickly, the definition of a double-blind study is two orthopods trying to read an EKG. <laughs> uh, but I'm an orthopedist, so I can be the only one to tell the joke. So uh, thank you very much for that presentation. I'm curious, again, are you in that due diligence grid thinking of the recent live core Cardia 6-lead EKG approved by the FDA, or were you representing their prior model in that due diligence? Well, the 6-lead is indicated still for AFib only. So that's an arrhythmia uh, tool. Okay, thank you. They are picking up ischemia, but so that's that's looking. That's at not what they are, uh, great. They thank they you. claimed in 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 that's not right. what they just studied studied. For and the that's FDA. not what the FDA approved. That's for. correct. Thank you so much. Any question? One question from the audience. Do we have audience questions? Yeah. Three questions. <laughs> Okay, um, so in terms of, of, you know, if you're a high-risk patient, you live with this of constant anxiety. Is it indigestion, any sensation in, 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 in your chest? It might, might be indication of another heart attack. So that fear is very pronounced, and our market research has shown that the acceptance uh, by the high-risk patient of a tool that will reassure them or get them to the intervention in time uh, would be very high indeed. You know, so, so it, indeed, high risk patients starting with very high risk repeat heart attack patients, uh, and then uh, basically climbing up uh, to about 30 million easy, uh, paper, um, uh, individuals who have a high risk for a coronary artery di disease, indeed. Um, and as far as our uh, business model is concerned, we we feel that th there are some uh, codes out there 
that are fit, but eventually we will have to get a new code because our value goes way beyond what's out there right now in terms of coding, in terms of CMS codes. Um, what we have raised so far 2.7 million for in a seed round. That seed round is still open. We'd love to add to it. And then we'll be looking for about 10 to $12 million A round um, later this year. Uh, the, the, it was a convertible note and uh, to the price round. So it was a very friendly uh, to the company and to the investors because it was a 30% disc discount, sorry. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much.